Hi! Welcome to my channel where I discuss everything I love about my favorite books. Today I would like to talk to you about Stoner by John Williams, which has recently become a favorite, yes. So at some point last year, it felt like everybody I was following on booktube was reading and loving Stoner. And I needed an audiobook to pick up, so I decided to figure out what all the hype was about. Um, now, it turned out that um, I thought that I was hearing about Stoner for the first time last year, but apparently I had purchased the Kindle edition back in 2014. So I don't know who had recommended it to me then. I don't remember. It was probably Goodreads or Amazon based on the stuff I was reading at the time. But yes, I've had the Kindle edition since 2014, so it's a good thing I finally got around to reading it thanks to all uh, the folks I follow on booktube reading and really enjoying it, right? So yeah, I, I already mentioned that I really loved this book and I'm hoping to chat to you about why now. Uh, so Stoner is the story of a mediocre English professor's very average life. The book literally opens <laughs> by telling us not to expect too much. It says, hey, a uh, stoner, he died <laughs> on so-and-so date, I don't remember, and his wife and child probably barely miss him. His colleagues did the bare minimum they needed to, to uh, memorialize him, and that's about it. Like, nobody misses him, nothing special happened in his life, and, you know, he, he has no special achievements to mark his name. And that's about it. That's all in the open paragraph. <laughs> so you know going into this story not to expect too much. But it also makes you wonder why everybody likes this book so very much. I, I know some things that people have mentioned which really stood out to them. But, uh, and, and I agree with all or uh, all of those, I think. But yeah, I'll, I'll talk about specifically the parts that really spoke to me and made me love this book as much as I did. Uh, I, I did mention that I listened to this on audiobook and I don't know if it's the narrator's general style because I haven't listened to anything else by this narrator or if it's the style they adopted for this audiobook but man the narrator paired really well. <laughs> it was this dry non-emotional style of telling a story that like of, of reading sorry that really went well with the dry and not a lot of interesting things happening nature of the book and also for a book that supposedly doesn't do much doesn't have many interesting things happening i breezed through the audiobook so i usually take a lot of time to finish audiobooks because i i just um I just listen to them when I'm doing chores, when I am not uh, watching TV while during while while doing my workouts, or uh, yeah, when I'm cooking, which you know, depending on how I'm feeling, might be very often or not at all, uh, and when I'm driving, which lately isn't very often at all. So yeah, it, it usually takes me a lot of time to finish an audiobook. I might read it for almost a month at a time but this one I think I finished it in a few days like this is one of those audiobooks for which I found <laughs> chores to do so I can listen to it so yeah I, I cooked a lot more when I was listening to Stoner <laughs> now we start with Stoner in, a, in his parents farm and they want to send him to college because they hope that he will bring some science and technology back from college and put it into the farm and maybe help the farm be more productive and so on but stoner <laughs> leaves the farm and then decides that he likes english a lot more i think the moment when he realizes that words mean something to him uh, how much you can get from the love of language and the love of words that part really spoke to me as someone who's loved reading since um, since being a child. I, I'm an only child and so reading was a very big companion of mine. 
it was how I spent my evenings, it was how I spent my afternoons and words mean a lot to me, like just the love of language means a lot to me and there are many many instances throughout this book um, because Stoner himself is an English professor where um, the author I guess uh, Vax is eloquent about how much Stoner loves language and uh, how he connects to what's being said and uh, on the page and I really loved all those descriptions. There are also certain sections where um, Stoner is teaching <laughs> something and he knows how passionately he feels about the material that he's teaching but he's not able to communicate his passion he's feeling like he's almost talking robotically and droning on and so on like he can feel that and that part also i appreciate it so much and it's just something that maybe i've had to struggle with my entire life like to being poor at communicating maybe sometimes and like not using the right words or maybe using too many words and always feeling like oh, I could have said that better if I only had a few more minutes to think about it or afterwards thinking of something that I could have said that maybe I could have used to explain something better to people all of that related to quite a lot to this whole mismatch between what he knows and loves versus what he actually conveys to his students so that part also just all of this centered around his um, love of the literature that he was studying and teaching I think I enjoyed reading about very very much um, Stoner's friends <laughs> were another interesting aspect when he's in college he has two friends who are more acquaintances than anything and he does not make any dear friends basically for his entire life these two acquaintances that he has are basically who his friends are for the rest of his life one of them unfortunately dies in a war and the other comes back and is the dean and you know he looks out for him as someone who is someone that he knows and you know has some nostalgia of uh, nostalgic memories associated with and so on but mostly he doesn't have any close or dear friends uh, with whom you know he can share his life or anything and you know he does ruminate on the nature of this friendship uh, at the very beginning at, uh, at the subjects that they choose to talk about it how they talk to each other or bring each other down in some cases and he ruminates on the quality and nature of this friendship and so that sets the stage I think for how almost sad it is that he doesn't make any other friends and these are his friends for the rest of his life and then of course there's Stoner's marriage which I think occupies a very significant portion of the telling of this story and yes he has an extremely unhappy marriage in that um, his wife clearly does not love him and he stops trying <laughs> very quickly so maybe if they had both put in more effort they would have had a more satisfying life they have one daughter together and that's it they don't his wife clearly doesn't like him and he doesn't find it in himself to care or to change that in any way um, and while for the m most part we come to almost hate his wife for sort of treating him <laughs> this way we do get a small look into why she might be the way she is uh, when her father dies she um, goes to the father's funeral and then as soon as that is done she goes and burns all her old toys she burns all her clothes gives herself a makeover and then she comes back um, to stoner um, this sort of changed person <laughs> and I think 
that maybe tells us that she was probably forced into this marriage. She probably blamed Stoner for it because he courted her and she, he maybe wasn't who she wanted to marry. But her father was eager to perhaps marry her up to anyone who would work. And she probably had this trying relationship with her father her entire life. So she took the first opportunity she could to be her own person by, uh, you know, burning everything from her past and redoing herself. Unfortunately, however, that did not mean that she came back to also try and find some affection for Stoner. But I think that nuance there, that glimpse into the wife's perspective also, I think added a lot of depth into that relationship that um, that sort of <laughs> marriage where people are just going through the paces and not really a lot of love. They just live together because they don't really have a choice and that's about it. So yeah, I really appreciated that additional nuance there. Now, uh, Stoner's relationship with his daughter, I think, is also really wonderfully documented. It starts out being this beautiful relationship because his wife is absent for a while and he's, uh, you know, caring for Grace, I believe is the daughter's name, if I remember correctly. Um, he's watching her. He's basically participating in her upbringing. He's... Um, teaching her all the things that he loves and sharing in everything that he's grown to love over the years and starts to find some joy in it until (laughs) the made over wife past her father's death comes back and sort of takes it all back. She thinks that he's spoiling Grace. Whether or not she sincerely believes it, I don't think we know very much. She probably does. She probably thinks that she's doing right by Grace. But my suspicion is that based on the glimpse we just had into how her father probably affected her, I think that um, she is being the kind of parent to Grace that her father was to her. And so is similarly pushing her to the extremes that her father did her. She basically (laughs) almost feels like she refuses to be happy because this is what her father wanted, maybe. Maybe that's me reading too much into that. But Grace also seems to be a blend of both um, uh, Stoner's wife's um, nature and I guess a little bit of Stoner's apathy for most things in life. So yeah, that was very interesting to read as well. And also was quite sad and um, and the same goes for his relationship with his work. I think for a recurring theme that we see in all of these is that for Stoner many things start out with the potential of being absolutely wonderful until they fizzle out into nothing and then he doesn't try very hard to bring the magic back or do something else that can mean the same to him or get around the situation that is causing the bad things to happen. Uh, We see this with his daughter primarily when his wife comes back and takes over. He tries to yell at his wife and tell her to not hurt Grace so much but, but she says or what, what are you going to do, leave me? We know that's not going to happen. So he says, yeah, yeah that's not going to happen. So, you know, I'll, I'll let you do what you want. And he basically just distances him, himself now from both his wife as well as his daughter. So that isn't very nice. That is also, I think, another symptom of this apathy he's had basically his entire life to not try harder, to not do better and just keep on living passively his relationship with his work is very similar right his um, he has a deep passion for it and he finds he's not a very good teacher 
because of this gap we discussed earlier between what he wants to say what passion he wants to convey and um what he actually ends up saying and so he doesn't try very hard for a while there but then he eventually finds a um i guess a balance or a comfort zone that he enjoys really teaching in and then along comes a student who ruins it all for him which by the way um that student's uh i guess it wasn't the dissertation defense it i think it was the oral exam to make him a phd candidate and that scene <laughs> best thing ever i haven't i do not understand any of the technical details that was discussed but i really loved that scene because that is the one thing that stoner is so passionate about and that really comes through and it's not even honestly it's not even passion um it's more that he feels like there is a right thing to do in this situation and he does it he does it because he has to and not yeah and and that's the sort of non passionate uh thought or motive that drives him but it ends up being one of the things that he cares about the most or one of the things that really made me respect him in this book so yeah i really loved reading that scene absolutely phenomenal <laughs> that was so well done especially given how i understood next to nothing of the actual technical detail that was exchanged in the conversation so anyway that student he comes along and ruins everything for stoner and now he's back to teaching lame <laughs> english classes <laughs> again and uh teaching boring things and being a mediocre teacher again and nobody cares about and he's subjected to that because of his um rival in the english department whom he made angry by making an antagonist of the student and yeah that's the other thing that he does angrily slash passionately right when he tries to get out of this um teaching after many 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 years of being this boring professor or teaching this boring class he decides i'm not doing this anymore i'm going to teach what i want and he does exactly that he <laughs> finds whatever loopholes he needs to and just proceeds to do what he wants so those are the two moments when stoner really takes charge and ends up getting what he wants in which i found immense respect for him but otherwise he just sort of lets life happen to him for the most part he he takes english classes because he takes that one uh, when he's in college sorry he takes english classes one of them i think is a requirement uh, for whatever degree he's getting or maybe he takes it on a whim i forget which but he really loves that class so he keeps taking more and more classes <laughs> but he doesn't actually switch his major to english until a professor calls him <laughs> into his office and has a conversation with him he gets a job as a professor in the same university because people have gone off to war and you know they need people here i think and he gets offered the job he chooses not to go to war that one he does on his own he has a deep think <laughs> with himself which <laughs> yeah i really enjoyed reading about how it is hard to introspect but he did that he sat in his room and thought for hours and decided i'm not going to this war he lost one of his friends respect for that but you know i appreciated all the reasoning and so on around this decision and i think this might be my favorite scene from the book when um the war ends and stoner finds uh, the english professor he respected so much uh, locked away in his room and 
weeping, <laughs> not celebrating with everyone else, but weeping because he understands the toll the war took on everyone around. I thought that scene was probably the most poignant and well done scenes in the whole book. I I loved the entire book. I felt the need to highlight every other paragraph, but this one is probably the best scene for me in the book. Um and then, you know, Stoner also sees a similar parallel when he's a professor and people are being sent off to war again or people are signing up for war. Um but yes, uh, what I was saying earlier was that a uh, Stoner made very few active decisions in his life other things mostly happened to him but the ones he made the ones that he cared about making and was passionate about i think those parts were very very well done overall i think stoner wasn't unhappy i think what makes this book so powerful and what i think it probably um is a favorite for um is because i think um, for me at least i know there have been many moments of apathy like there are many things that i want to go get and i will fight actively to get them but i also know all the moments of apathy where i just couldn't be bothered it just so happens that stoners life's majority is filled with these moments but there are probably things at each point in his life that folks can relate to and maybe that's what makes this book so powerful for myself i had so many places where i could relate to or understand why stoner made a decision or sometimes why he couldn't be bothered or <laughs> I think Stoner was just born exhausted with life. That's almost the sense that we get. But for all that, I don't think he had an unhappy life. I think if you um so so the way I thought about this is if you, you know, plot an average life, I think many people have highs that go up maybe high and then lows that go really low and overall it averages out into a medium or satisfactory life um and you know you have some moments that you can write home about or tell stories about i think for stoner the highs were not very high the lows were not very low either because just a lot of bad things didn't happen to him or the ones that did happen he didn't i i didn't get the sense that he cared about it enough like he's just resigned that this will happen he'll deal with it as it comes and he won't do much or he won't feel <laughs> very much and that's the sense i got that you know the overall investment that stoner put into his life wasn't a lot but the moments of like medium life were you know aspects that a lot of people can probably relate to so yeah i think that's why this book probably works for so many people why it's so many people's favorite book or one of their favorite books it certainly has become one of mine because of the writing style because of a lot of the observations about life and people that are made either directly or indirectly just because just through this chronicle of stoner's life and um yeah i think and and the narrator has done a fantastic job i definitely have to give um i don't remember his name unfortunately but i will give them significant credit for um how much i enjoyed the reading of this book so that's all thank you so much for listening i'll see you in the next one